Hello and welcome to Straight Talk, Supply Chain Insights, the podcast for your supply chain leader who is on the go and wants to be in the know. And now, your host, Laura Ciceri. Welcome to Straight Talk with Supply Chain Insights. My name is Laura Ciceri and I'm the host and also the founder of Supply Chain Insights. And today I'm interviewing Kevin Wong and Kevin is the CTO at Nulogy. Kevin, welcome to the show. Uh, Thanks, Laura. So, Kevin, tell the group a little bit about yourself and a little bit about your company. So, um, yeah, I'm Kevin Wong. I'm the uh, the COO, actually, at, at Nulogy. I headed up product for, for many years and have now sort of transitioned to focusing on um, a little bit more future-looking, major um, sort of strategic uh, moves for the for the company, some of our, our larger initiatives, um, and, and helping our organization scale. Uh, my background is a little bit more on the technology side, um, working in some high-growth uh, technology companies here in Toronto, um, and also in, in enterprise software at, uh, at Microsoft. Um, I founded the company Nuigi, uh back in, in 2002. Um, we've always been very focused on, on solving real-world problems, solving um, problems that you know really hadn't been solved before. And uh, there was a lot of really interesting problems in supply chain, and um, we'd been we've been working now there since since the beginning, and um, you know really excited about where we are now with uh, sort of seeing the trends driving um, increased complexity um, and um, and sort of challenges with uh, a lot of demand variability um, in supply chain, and which which plays really well to the types of problems we're really focused on solving around agile customization in the uh, sort of late stage customization challenges of, um, of supply chains, particularly on the consumer brands side of things, consumer packaged goods, fast moving consumer goods, um, food and beverage, um, personal care. Well, first of all, sorry I got your title wrong, but congratulations on the promotion. And I think of Nology as a supply chain operating network that connects uh, brand owners and food and consumer packaged goods with contract manufacturers. Is that too simplistic? Um, no, I mean I think that at the at the at a high level, that's that's definitely the case. You know, we see the the um, you know supply chain really more as a as a supply network. Um, you know. A, Specialized, sort of heterogeneous or, uh, companies, contract uh, logistics companies, contract manufacturers, increasingly contract packagers, uh, working with you know these large um, consumer brands, and um, you know there's this growth of of outsourcing to these these different parties, and in order for them to all work effectively together, they need to work as a as a network, um, as if it were. Um, a single company, but but now really it's a collection of different companies needing to coordinate together. So um, trying to operate like a uh, a single company, but but really being um, a group of disparate organizations does require, um, I think, um, you know, new technologies and you know, supply chain operating network. I think is a is a pretty good descriptor. You know, we're um, a little different, I feel like, um, than, than some other folks who fall into that category is that we're, you know, we're quite focused on um, some of the, the unique challenges with uh, late stage customization um, and particularly driving um, value from a concept to delivery to a, to a consumer. So um, while we are, you know, very focused on delivery on supply chain, we really see the value of what our organization is bringing to uh, to the consumer brands of the world in helping them launch products more successfully, getting feedback about what um, products are succeeding in market uh, more more rapidly, and um, making those those launches, um, you know, drive more revenue, higher margin. Um, you know, more successful by by learning and launching them much more quickly, and that involves you know coordination not just within supply chain but within um, you know marketing, sales, R and D ultimately, and and through to you know the touch point with the consumer, which you know is becoming more and more um, varied with different channels and different retail formats coming out. Obviously, e-commerce, but you know, omni-channel um, uh, and and e-commerce really disrupting that. Well, you know, Kevin, you've been in this role or similar role since 2002, and we've seen a lot of changes over the last 
16, 17 years. But what do you think supply chain 2030 looks like a decade from now? Um, and what do you think people have to do to get ready? Yeah, you know, that's definitely something that um, we, we think a fair amount about here at Nuji. You know, we're, we're really trying to build technology for that future supply chain. Um, you know, we, we see that, um, that sort of diverse, heterogeneous um, uh, network of companies needing to coordinate more effectively is, is going to be the reality. So I think there'll be a lot less uh, vertical integration. And I think technology is going to be a major enabler of it. Um, you know, the internet obviously, you know, been around for, for a long time now, but I think the real power of it is, is almost just starting to be realized, um, in, in supply chain. So, you know, the, the growth of, of software as a service is definitely enabling, um, these different companies to coordinate, uh, more, more freely and with, with less cost. So if you think of, you know, what would have driven, um, a company to own its own supply chain in the past, you know, reducing the transaction costs of dealing with the different parties um, every step of the way. Um, With technology, you can increase the ease of collaboration, reduce the the time and speed of of transacting, doing business, um, maintaining visibility, all these types of things in the future. So as those barriers drop down more and more, I think there's going to be increased outsourcing, um, increased specialization, and, uh, you know, I, I actually don't think that'll necessarily um, result in loss of the advantages that previously people um, were looking for with more vertical integration, like some of those economies of scale can still be achieved. You see that in, in you know, contract manufacturing where um, a brand is still could be sourcing materials for their whole volume, but have their external manufacturing partners draw down against those, those bulk orders. Um, which gives you know the brand the flexibility to work with um, different you know geographically separated or specialized manufacturers, but still achieve the the same effect of that um, uh, economies of scale that you would typically see in in vertical integration. And I think you know that that environment will will result in a supply chain that's much more flexible and much more agile. And I think that's actually going to be required because if you look at on sort of the other side, the consumers uh, are driving. Um, you know, more and more diversity of, of products wanting to buy how they want, when they want through different channels, um, retail formats are going to be changing. So it's going to drive a lot of um, uh, challenges onto brands and their supply chain to sort of respond to that. Um, but I think the good news is that the technology and, and the specialization of, of these supply chain partners are going to make that uh, more and more possible. So Kevin, you know, you work with me on Network of Networks, and I appreciate your participation. And, you know, if I look at the evolution of networks, because I covered the market and when I was at Gartner in 2002, and I was really quite excited and believed that we could do fabulous things. But when I look at the work of the Network of Networks and the mapping we're currently doing on the Trading Partner Index, very few companies are actually networked. Most of the focus has been in the side four walls. How do we change that or what changes that or do you think that'll change? Yeah, no, that's, that's a great question. I think, um, you know, I already talked a little bit on technology, you know, I think that's going to be an important factor, but I think actually a big part of it is sort of a change in the way of thinking of a, part, of a partnership between, um, you know, the brands and their, their external suppliers. So, you know, where we see more success definitely um, is when that partnership is really viewed as as being a sort of, we call it like a vested partnership, um, rather than sort of a more classical, if you will, customer-vendor relationship. Um, they're really trying to work more collaboratively, almost as a single company on the same side of the table, um, trying to work through problems. And um, I think it does take a little bit of, of a mindset, um, maybe a little bit more long term rather than sort of transactional thinking, um, not focused strictly on cost, but on, you know, service and, and quality and these types of things. So, and I do see that, that kind of changing, but, um, you know, I think there is a cultural shift that is required within organizations to, to, you know, adapt for that, to that future. And then, you know, as they become more comfortable uh, with those kind of partnership models, I think you will see, um, you know, more growth of, of these networks and, and more willingness to, to work with other companies and leverage, um, you know, these, these kinds of technologies that, 
are, are required to, you know, make these kinds of partnerships uh, work fluidly. What's the cultural change that's required? I, when do companies use the technology the best? So I think, you know, the, the companies that are using the, the technology the best are ones that, you know, they're, they're definitely focused on, um, I think, you know, the, the metrics ultimately that I think they, they share with their suppliers. So when I, when I think about it and the way I like to talk to our customers is, you know, they're, they're both um, sort of beholden to, to the end consumers in the end. So, you know, an, an on time in full metric isn't, you know, owned by just the brand or just their supplier. You know, if they miss that, it's the, the retailer um, or ultimately the consumer who is impacted and is really driving, um, you know, those, those kinds of metrics. So, you know, taking that kind of lens and, and then mentality and then looking at having the technology in place that lets you focus on trying to solve that problem and, and not sort of spending your time, um, you know, working with the data. Like I get these, you know, stories from customers how, you know, like I only have, you know, 30 minutes or an hour or something every week, you know, to, to talk about, you know, how to improve our partnership. And, you know, if 80% of the, of that time, we're just trying to get our heads around what the right data is, like what really happened. Um, you know, we have hardly any time to actually talk about how we can improve um, together and improve our partnership, achieve, you know, improve those metrics. So, um, you know, I think the two go hand in hand, the technology and the attitude, because if you have the technology in place so that you have, um, you know, high quality data that's, you know, very accessible, easy to use. Um, it's proper data governance. Uh, it'll allow uh, those conversations to be more like 80% focused on how to actually work together and improve service and um, almost no time really trying to get sorted out what really happened and, and the sort of the real uh, truth of the matter. And I think having that sort of, uh, you know, shared version of the truth and that shared data I think allows for um, it, it really enables that trusting. So there's like a, as a positive, positive um, virtuous cycle there because um, there won't be sort of he said she said about the data. This is like our data. We, you know, it's on a, a shared platform. Um, you know, we we can trust it and just sort of like move move forward. I like the idea of sharing metrics and being held accountable for outcomes. Uh, I think that's great wisdom. You know, your application sits between procurement, quality, supply chain organizations, and, you know, I think one of the issues people have is how do they organize to do this kind of work? You got any insights there as people look to build networks? Uh, how do they organize to be effective? Good question. I mean, when I think about um, organizations and how they need to organize, I'm I'm thinking a lot more about how to sort of break down the silos in within some of the these you know very large um, you know organizations that are you know the, the leaders in, in in consumer goods um, you know they have their more traditional you know sales marketing R and D supply chain or manufacturing and uh, you know I hear about technology challenges where you know uh, the other side like our partners and the you know sort of the other side of the building. Um, have this data, but I don't have any access to it. It's very difficult to get access to. It takes, you know, kind of forever to do. So I'm not able to do my job as well. Um, and, you know, it's that sort of same story on the other side. So I, I, I'm really interested in trying to break down the barriers between these different departments. Um, we, we're trying to do that with, with our technology, Anulogy, to, again, streamline the execution throughout that value chain um, ultimately in, in service of the, of the, the, con the customers and the consumers. Um, but that does take, a, I think, a little bit of a different um, way of thinking within organizations. But, you know, I'm, I'm definitely um, optimistic about it because I, I, as I've been talking to, you know, our, our, our brands um, and, and customers, they're starting to see this challenge and, and wanting to, to, to be tackling it. So I, I've been hearing people within these organizations who are, starting to get mandates to, to kind of break down those barriers and work across, you know, across these silos. Well, Kevin, we look forward to seeing you at the Supply Chain Insights Global Summit. Um, any last minute thoughts for people as they think about getting in the right mindset of coming to the summit, collaborating, and really focusing on imagining 2030? I think definitely, you know, come with, with an open mind. I, I think, um, 
you know, be prepared to have a lot of uh, courage, I think. Um, you know, uh, I think there's uh, a lot of possibilities there, but they, they require change management and sort of like a, you know, a tough stomach to, to drive through that and bring those, that change about. But, um, uh, I, you know, I'm definitely very warmed to see the, the, the sort of growing appetite for the digital transformation and, and seeing um, what might be possible if um, things are thought about a little bit differently. But, you know, I think it's really important to not just get excited about it and like the way you're running, Laura. Well, thank you very much for the interview today. We look forward to seeing you at the summit. Until next time.